ஹரே கிருஷ்ணா ஜய ராதா மாதவ
ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದಾನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮೆ ಗೌರಾಶೇ ನಮಃ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾಮನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ್ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಯು ಆರ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಫಾರ್ಚುನೇಟ್ ದಟ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥ್ ರಥಯಾತ್ರ ಇಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ವೆರಿ ಸೂನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ವೇದಸಾರ್ ಪ್ರಭು ಆಸ್ ಮಿ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ನಾನ ಯಾತ್ರ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಮೋರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಸ್ನಾನ ಯಾತ್ರ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ಅಪ್ರೋಚ್ ಸ್ನಾನ ಯಾತ್ರ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಸ್ನಾನ ಯಾತ್ರ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಿಮಾ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಂಟ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅವರ್ ಸ್ನಾನ ಯಾತ್ರ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ವಿ ಟು ಎವ್ರಿ ಇಯರ್ ಇನ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಪಾನಿಯಾತಿ ಧಾಮ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದ ರಥ ಯಾತ್ರ ಸೊ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಇನ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಸ್ನಾನ ಯಾತ್ರ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ but i will give a small synopsis of what snanatra is about and then i will speak something that is probably not appropriate to speak publicly but today i feel inspired to speak something from my heart so i will speak that <clears throat> snanatra is a very very important festival for all of us because we have their lordships shri shri jagannath baladev subhadra and sudarshan ji on our altar and snana yatra is their appearance day just like janmashtami is the appearance day of lord krishna gaur purnima is the appearance day of shri gauranga mahaprabhu snana yatra is the tithi the day when shri jagannath baladev subhadra and sudarshan ji appeared in shri jagannath puri answering the prayers and devotion of maharaj indra dyumya this was many many yugas ago so on snana yatra day jagannath baladev subhadra and sudarshan they are brought outside the temple on a specially constructed mandap called snana mandap and very pure nectarian water is collected from very sacred and secret wells and lakes and rivers deep into the forest of orissa these are water bodies where even animals don't go and special water pure water is procured for the snan yatra and then the pandas the pujaris of lord jagannath they further sanctify this water with different herbs and uh, articles like turmeric and then in full public view jagannath baladev subhadra on that elevated snana mandap they are given a ceremonial bath going on for several hours and it is done on the early morning hours of purnima tithi in the month of jesh which is coming up jagannath baladev subhadra are bathed with very beautiful different different holy waters while there is beautiful kirtan of the holy names and wonderful musical instruments are played and it is broadcasted live on television every year the snan yatra and during snan yatra you can see lord jagannath is divine color it gets somewhat washed away because lord jagannath is the supreme personality of godhead appearing 
for our benefit in a wooden form and his form is marked with natural colors not oil based artificial colors from the market these are natural minerals and dyes which are used to paint jagannath so naturally the water washes away some of this paint and immediately jagannath ji he is dressed in a ganapati vesh called gaja vesh and there is a beautiful pastime which we will discuss later on when we have the full discussion on snan yatra after that jagannath he performs his leela his pastime of falling sick and that is called anavasa for a fortnight jagannath is taken to a secret location where very special pujaris of jagannath they nurse him back to health by giving him a very special diet consisting of fruits and certain medicinal drinks after jagannath fully recovers of course he is again repainted by the daitas by the servants of jagannath he is repainted and that is called as nava yavanam he comes out fresh like a youth and then all the devotees have not had his darshan for a fortnight so the devotees are in separation from jagannath their utkantha their eagerness to see jagannath has gone up tremendously so as soon as jagannath comes out he says now i want to go on rath yatra and that will be our rath yatra and pani hati festival which is coming up. so this is a very beautiful past time and it has deep significance and i would like to discuss something from my heart which generally i have not spoken this publicly but today i feel inspired to speak so please bear with me today is today is sunday and the last weekend a week ago was a very special tithi it was the tithi of a very great acharya called shri shamananda prabhu he is a very important acharya in our sampradaya he was a disciple of shri riday chaitanya goswami of ambika kalma from our mayapur dham and his shiksha guru was shila jeeva goswami so i would like to glorify shila shamananda prabhu because he has a very deep relationship very interesting relationship with the snan yatra as well as our most revered beloved founder acharya his divine grace shri shri mata bhai charana arvind bhakti vedanta swami maharaj shri prabhu bhai ji very interesting connection and link so i would like to discuss that shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and shri nityananda prabhu had a very intimate associate called gauridas pandit gauridas pandit is one of the dwadasha gopals of krishna leela he is an incarnation of subal sakha subal sakha is a priya narma sakha of krishna which means he is a very intimate friend of krishna subal sakha in fact the gopashtami festival that we have every year during kartik it is one of the two tithis of the year where in some temples the lotus feet of shrimati radharani are visible to our eyes but the pujaris they are always so fortunate that they can have darshan of shrimati radharani's lotus feet every day but we are not so fortunate but on those two tithis all of us on radhashtami and gopashtami we can see so this gopashtami leela when shrimati radharani dressed up as subal sakha that's why her lotus feet are visible she dressed up as a cowherd boy that is that subal sakha who came as gauridas pandit in dorli and he lived at ambika kalma many times he invited shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and shri nityananda prabhu to come to his house for prasad and mahaprabhu would say yes yes i will come i will but mahaprabhu is busy with his ashtakali leela in navadvi day and night he is doing kirtan with his associates he never found the time to cross ganga and go to ambika kalna to honor the invitation of gauridas pandit finally gauridas pandit felt so dejected he said mahaprabhu and nityananda would never come to my house they never accept my invitation all right i will give up eating and drinking and i will not go in any of the kirtans of uh, mahaprabhu i will not go to nadia and i will just not see mahaprabhu now he closed his doors went into man transcendently angry at mahaprabhu when mahaprabhu came to know this 
He told Nitai, Nitai, get a boat. Let's go. Let's cross the river and go to Ambika. So Gaur Nitai, they got into a boat and Mahaprabhu himself held the oars of that boat and rowed the boat across Ganga, went to Ambika Kalna. They knocked on the door of Gauridas Pandit. Gauridas Pandit opened the door. He was so blissful to see his Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu at his doorstep. He said, Mahaprabhu, you finally came. You accepted my invitation. Please come, please come. You are so blissful. He invited Gaur Nitai in his house and immediately got busy cooking for them. His mood was to cook and feed Gaur Nitai very nicely. So he cooked and he fed them and they ate everything that was offered with great bliss. And then Mahaprabhu said, well, now I have to go, but I will not go like that. You see, I use this oar to oar myself, to row the boat across the Ganga. I brought it for you. You keep this. And he had a pothi. He had a grantha wrapped in a red cloth. It was Bhagavad Gita. But this was Bhagavad Gita that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself had written down with his own pearl-like handwriting. And he said, this is Bhagavad Gita written by me. All 700 verses, you keep it. You keep it. Now, Mahaprabhu was going to take sannyas very soon. Gauridas Pandit did not know. Mahaprabhu did not want to tell him. But he knew that he will feel so much separation. So let me give him my oar. Let me give him my Grantha Bhagavad Gita. You think Gauridas Pandit was satisfied with this? <laughs> when Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu started leaving, he started crying. He said, please, you look good when you come. You don't look good when you go. Don't go. Please stay with me. He started crying like a small child. Mahaprabhu didn't have the heart to walk away. He sat down. He said, Gauri Das, whenever you think of me, I will be with you. Mahaprabhu, don't do that word jugglery with me. You did that with the gopis and you left Vrindavan. Don't leave me and go, please. Mahaprabhu said, when I dance with the gopis in Rasalila, I expand myself into millions of Krishnas and I dance with each gopi, millions of gopis, headed by Srimati Radharani. So I will expand myself into one more set of Gaurnita. So Nityananda Prabhu became two and Mahaprabhu became two. Our Gaurnita, they manifested one more pair of Gaurnita. Two Jodis. So one pair stayed with Gauridas Pandit and one pair started walking out. It's a beautiful pastime where Gauridas Pandit said, no, 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 no. You don't go, you stay. These statues can go. Then the statues started walking away and Gaurnita stood there as statues. <laughs> Again said, no, 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 I made a mistake. Please, 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 wait. You, you go and you stay. Don't go. Because he wanted deities that will walk with him, talk with him, reciprocate with him, to stay with him. Finally, it happened many times. Then Mahaprabhu said, listen, Gauridas, don't you understand? There is no difference between me and my deity. As far as you are concerned, I will stay with you in a form that talks to you, walks with you, eats whatever you cook. I will fully reciprocate with you. But this adhikar, this qualification, everyone doesn't have. So after you leave, I will, I will become statue. But as long as you are on this planet, both of us will stay with you in saksha, actual. We'll be talking with you, eating with you, walking with you, everything. So one pair of Gaur Nitai stayed with Gauridas Pandit and one pair went back to Nadia. All his life, Gauridas Pandit served his Gaur Nitai. They were his life and soul. They were his Ishtadev. Now, he started getting old. But still, it was his rule that every day he would cook 56 items. Now, please remember, in those days, there was no MTR masala. There was no frozen chopped vegetables that you just thaw and throw it in the chop. You have to get each and every ingredient, make it with your own hands, grind it, get the, grow, grow the vegetables, harvest them, wash them, cut them, take the grains and grind them into powder and make chapatis, make rice. Everything you have to do with your own hands. And he had no assistant. Because bhakti is a path where you want to do for, for Krishna in a very personal way. You don't delegate. In the corporate world, we delegate. Hey, you do. I'm manager. You do this. We create teams. We delegate everything. That is not how bhakti works. Bhakti is very personal. For your deities, you want to do it yourself. One time, when devotee went to one of our gurus, our Iskon Guru Varga. And he said that I made a mistake. There was an evening Bhagavad Gita class in the temple. I wanted to come, but it was also time to wake up my Gaurnita in the evening and give them their fruit offering of the evening. But I had to come. I was getting late for the Gita class. So I told my servant to offer. 
this happened in india i told my servant to offer it when i came back from the satsang the servant offered me mahaprasad and there was orange there was apple and there was a banana but this servant had not peeled the banana he had offered the banana with the peel to government i got very angry at ch- i threw the banana plate away what is this you think krishna will eat it with the peel don't you know how to offer haven't you seen me you have to cut the vegetable cut the fruits and offer a nice fruit plate so krishna can directly eat this is not the way to offer and then he immediately realized what did he do he threw the mahaprasad away in anger so he came and in a public class he apologized to maharaj maharaj i made this aparad maharaj said there are two aparads one is a small aparad and one is a big aparad the small aparad is that you threw the mahaprasad plate away but still you did that out of love for your ishta out of love for gaurmita because you wanted gaurmita to be served properly so your anger stemmed from that attachment to your deities so that is a small offense but the bigger offense is you did not make the offering yourself and you delegated it to someone who doesn't have love for your gaurmita so the point is that service is very personal gauridas pandit was even though he was old his eyes eyesight was weak his hands were trembling his joints were arthritic still he continued to do everything for his duties himself gaurnitha i told him just give us some rice and some shak you don't have to make all this 56 items we are we love you just give us some rice we'll be happy you don't have to labor so hard it pains us to see you laboring for hours cooking for us every day gaurdas pandit said i will not reduce the standard of my worship i will not reduce the standard of my offerings no if you want if you feel pain watching me laboring so hard give me some assistant <laughs> give me some assistant and immediately one brahmachari walked in he offered obeisances to gauridas pandit and said guru maharaj please accept me as your servant i want to assist you gauridas had sent that brahmachari and gauridas i would play every day with gauridas pandit because they have sakya bhav subal sakha sakya bhav so they play they would play hide and seek so one day it was a turn of gaurmita to hide and it was a turn of gauridas pandit to seek to find them and they would play it in the house only because you cannot show people outside that gaurmita are talking and walking so these are confidential past times and the brahmachari was sitting in a corner like our prabhu ji is sitting cross leg he was sitting and watching his guru maharaj gaurdas pandit playing hide and seek with gaurmita he was watching and gaurmita was playing with gaurdas pandit hide and seek so gaurnitai hid and gaurdas pandit could not find them he started searching everywhere gaurnitai gaurnitai where are you where are you search every nook and corner he couldn't find he opened the temple door went outside search in the courtyard search everywhere behind trees in the trees behind bushes he just couldn't find gaurnitai started feeling separation from his duty started calling out gaurnitai gaurnitai where are you where are you he asked his brahmachari student did you see gaurnitai and he was just sitting smiling Look at this guru there. <laughs> he didn't say anything. Where is Gaur? Gaur Nitha, I cannot live without him. Started crying. Gaur Das Pandit started crying. Gaur Nitha, Gaur Nitha, where are you? Where are you? Finally, he was about to give up his life in separation from Gaur Nitha, and Gaur Nitha jumped out of the heart of that Brahmachari and said, "We have, we were, we were hiding in his heart. <laughs> we were hiding in his heart." So Gaur Das Pandit was very much relieved. He embraced the Brahmachari. Said, "You are so pure." that gaur that gaur nitai hid in your heart from today your name will be your name will be ridai chaitanya das that das that servant in whose heart shri gauranga mahaprabhu shri nityananda prabhu took shelter ridai chaitanya so that brahmachari became ridai chaitanya shri gauridas pandit entered the nitya leela and ridai chaitanya took over the service of gaur nitai he was also worshiping gaur nitai with great love some distance away from ambika kalna a very wonderful boy took birth to very devoted parents the parents were great devotees of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu chaitanya mahaprabhu had disappeared from this world just 5 years ago and this child was born but before he was born several other children took birth and died so parents are very concerned that this boy will also die so they named him dukhi dukhi such a dukhi means one who is very sad such a name was given so that yamraj will have mercy 
and not take his life. Dukhi. Are dukhi. Chodo. Leave him. He's already Dukhi. Why kill him? So he was named Dukhi. And all the villagers were calling him Dukhiya, Dukhiya. But this Dukhiya grew up hearing Gaur Mitai Lila. The past tense of Gaur Mitai. And different devotees would come from Nadia to his village. And there would be Gaur Katha in the village. And this little Dukhi grew up hearing that Gaur Katha. One day, some pilgrims came. They did a very beautiful Gaur Katha from Chaitanya Bhagavad. And then they said, now we are going to Ambika to take darshan of a very great devotee. His name is Ridai Chaitanya. And they narrated the pastime of Gaur Mitai in the house of Gauridas Pandit and how Ridai Chaitanya. So when this Dukhiya heard the story, he said, I immediately accept that Ridai Chaitanya as my Guru Maharaj. Oh, sadhus, will you please take me with you to Ambika? I want to come with you. He took permission from his parents and accompanied the sadhus to Ambika Kalna. Fell at the feet of Ridai Chaitanya and accepted Ridai Chaitanya Goswami as his spiritual master. Ridai Chaitanya Goswami said, I accept you as my disciple. You be Krishna Das. So from today, your name will be Krishna Das. But he was called Dukhi. So his name became Dukhi Krishna Das. Dukhi Krishna Das. Yes, he became Dukhi Krishna Das. He asked his, now listen carefully. This is the heart of today's discussion. Dukhi Krishna Das asked his spiritual master, Ridai Chaitanya Goswami, what is my seva? What is my service? Ridha Chaitanya Goswami said, this is the mandir of Gaurmita. This is their property. You see all these acres and acres of land, this is all property of Gaurmita. You grow tulsi, you grow flowers, you go, grow vegetables and grains for Gaurmita. They should have their own kitchen garden. Why should we buy from others? They should have their own kitchen garden, own tulsi leaves. Tulsi manjaris, flowers, fruits, vegetables, grains, you grow. So Dukhi Krishna Das spent all his time cultivating that garden. He would go to the nearby Ganga, fill his earthen pots with water, put it on his head, and he would come running to the garden and he would water. Water the crops, water the vegetables, water the Tulsi plant. Day and night he would work, single handedly. And when he would carry the water pot, some water would drip. So he would be climbing up, running, water would fill, fall down. And that was his Snanyatra. <laughs> he would bathe with that water and he would come and take care of the garden of Gaurmita. That was his bhajan, that was his life and soul. Day and night he was busy growing beautiful, beautiful flowers and vegetables and fruits for Gaurmita on the order of his spiritual master. He would be working all day in the garden. To the extent that his Gurudev, uh, Ridai Chaitanya, did not see Dukhi Krishna Das for many days. Because he would be working constantly. He would just come, bring the vegetables, fruits, keep them outside the temple and go back to the garden. He was so busy. Beautiful flowers, beautiful fruits, vegetables were coming. But he was not there to spend time with his Gurudev. One day Gurudev said, Ridai Chaitanya said, Oh, Dukhi Krishna Das, it has been so many days I have not seen you. Come here. Come here, I want to see you, I want to embrace you. I am so pleased with your devotional service. Duhi Krishna Das came, he bowed down to his Gurudev. When he bowed down, his Gurudev saw that his head was bleeding. He was carrying all these water pots on his head. Because of the abrasions, he had wounds on his scalp, on his head. And there were worms in those wounds. And those worms were falling. And he had not even noticed them. He was not taking care of himself. He was completely engrossed in seva. He was one-pointedly doing service. He did not even realize that his body is sick. Ridai Chaitanya Goswami was so overwhelmed to see the dedication of his disciple. He embraced him tightly and touched his head repeatedly. My child, my child, you need to take care of yourself, my child. And all the wounds immediately healed. Dukhi Krishna Rasa, all his wounds healed. He said, you didn't even realize that your head was bleeding and you had wounds and worms there, pus coming out. You didn't even realize? He said, Gurudev, really I did not realize. I was so ecstatic in the Guru Pradatta Seva, the Seva that you gave, Guru Pradatta Seva. I was so engrossed that I did not realize. Every flower that grows, I see Radha Sham, Radha Sham in them. Every fruit that grows, I see that this is meant for the pleasure of Radha Sham Sundar. 
He said like that. I was totally busy, totally engrossed. Vidya Chaitanya Goswami said, you have attained the perfection of your life in this seva. The best thing I can do is to send you to the leader of all Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Do you know, my dear child, today, the leader of all Gaudiya Vaishnavas lives in Sri Vrindavan Dham. He is the recipient of mercy of Sri Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu personally took him on Navadvip Parikrama. He is the recipient of the love and affection of Sri Rupa and Sanatan Goswami. When he was a mere child, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had placed his lotus foot on his head in Ramkeli. That great personality, that Mahapurush is Sri Jiva Goswami. Today I will write a letter to Sri Jiva Goswami and today itself you go to Vrindavan and you take shelter of Jiva Goswami. He will teach you Radha Krishna Upasana. He will teach you Radha Krishna Upasana. He will give you Vraj Bhakti. You go to Vrindavan, my child. You go to Vrindavan. Dukhi Krishna started crying. He fell at the feet of his Gurudev. He said, Gurudev, you are everything for me. You are my Sarvasva. I cannot leave you. Gurudev said, if you want to please me, you go to Jiva Goswami and show him the letter that I write. And with his own hands, Riddha Chaitanya Goswami wrote a letter to Shila Jiva Goswami. Dukhi Krishna Das took that letter and went to Vrindavan. He went to Shri Raha Damodar temple and fell at the lotus feet of Jiva Goswami and gave that letter. That letter read, my dear Jiva Goswami, please accept this child of mine, Dukhi Krishna Das, as your own. And please teach him Radha Krishna Upasana. You see, because Gauri Das Pandit and Dhrida Chaitanya Goswami, they are in Sakya Bhav. Whereas, when Dukhi Krishna Das said, in every flower, I see Radha Krishna. His Gurudev understood that his Ishta is Radha Krishna. So to give him entrance into conjugal love, to give him entrance into Madhurya Prem, you need someone who is in that mood, who is in the Manjari Bhav. And therefore he sent Dukhi Krishna Das to Jiva Goswami. Jiva Goswami said, you are the disciple of Ridha Chaitanya Goswami from Ambika Kalna. It is my great fortune to serve you as your Shiksha Guru. Please come and you can take instructions from me. At that time, Shri Narottam Das Thakur and Shri Srinivas Acharya were also under the guidance of Shri Jiva Goswami. And these three became best friends. Dukhi Krishna Das, Shri Narottam Das Thakur and Shri Srinivas Acharya. One day, Dukhi Krishna Das asked Shri Jiva Goswami, what service is there for me? Shri Jiva Goswami said, the service for you, my dear Dukhi Krishna Das, is Sohini Seva. You understand what is Sohini Seva? Sweeping. Sweeping. He said, you clean Shri Vrajraham. Specifically, you go to Seva Kunj and you do Sohini Seva. In Seva Kunj. You go to the Rasa Sthali. Every night there is Rasa Lila of Radha and Krishna. And in the morning, in Vrindavan, there is no litter. This is 500 years ago. There is no garbage there. So what do you clean in Sohini Seva? Shri Jiva Goswami explained. At night, there is Ras Lila of Radha Shamsundar. Every night. And the gopis and manjaris, they are showering flower petals on Radha and Krishna as the Ras Lila is going on. So in the morning, all those flowers are there strewn across the Rasamandali. Rasamandali. You go and you clean them and prepare the Rasa Sthali for the next night's Rasa Sthali. This is your seva. But you must go there early in the morning before the sun rises, before the devotees come, before the pilgrims come. You go and you clean. This is called Sohini Seva. And you do Sohini Seva. Shri Riday, Shri, Shri Dukhi Krishna Das, he took the instruction of Shri Jiva Goswami to his heart. And every morning he would wake up and he would chant his japa. And then around 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, he would go to Seva Kunj and he would do Sohini Seva. He would do sweeping. Can you all think of some of our Acharyas who did this Sohini Seva? Raise your hand if you can think. Yes, Prabhu. Can you elaborate on that? Yes. Yes. 
that sweeper number or the domain act further like a market. Zero, zero, zero. Wonderful, wonderful. Any other examples of Sohini Seva? Sweeping service, cleaning. How about Dukhi Krishna Das's friend? We just mentioned there were three friends together. Yes. Yes, very nice. Very nice. Shri Jayapatra Swami Maharaj, Shri Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, Shri Bhakti Varun Thakur Mahasaya. Yes. How about Narottam Das Thakur? Come on, all of you know this. Shri Narottam Das Thakur, Sohini Seva. Who was the guru of Shri Narottam Das Thakur? Yes, yes. See, the Garima told. The place where Shri Lokanath Goswami would answer nature's call, that was the place that Shri Narottam Das Thakur would go and clean. My Guru Maharaj, Shri Radhanath Swami Maharaj was saying that just like our pujaris go on their knees and they clean the altar after the Aarti, that was the attitude of Shri Narottam Das Thakur when he cleaned the area where Shri Lokanath Goswami would answer nature's call. It was like an altar for him. That, that was the Guru Nishtha, that was the Guru Seva, the Guru Prem that these Acharyas had. So he is Seva. But the reason I am telling this pastime is our revered founder Acharya, His Divine Grace, Shila Bhai Charanaravinda, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharashtra Prabhupada did Sohini Seva every morning at 3 a.m. at the Samadhi Mandir of Shri Rupa There is a book written by one disciple of Shri Prabhupada called Mula Prakriti Mataji. Anybody has heard of her grace Mula Prakriti Mataji? There is a book that you should all read by her grace Mula Prakriti Mataji. It is called Shri Prabhupada, a friend to all. Makhan Lal Prabhu, have you heard of Shila Prabhupada, a friend to all book by Mula Prakriti Mataji? No, it's a beautiful book. Okay. Very beautiful and very unique book. You know why it is unique? Who had it? I have it, but it's the, it's available online. Okay. Shila Prabhupada, a friend to all. Very unique biography of Shila Prabhupada. You know why it is unique? Because all the biographies of Shila Prabhupada, they focus on Shila Prabhupada's life as an Acharya after he founded Islam. Correct? But this book, Mula Prakriti Mataji's book, Shila Prabhupada, a friend to all, she compiled it by interviewing different devotees from Calcutta, from Navadvip Dham, from Shri Vrindavan Dham, who knew Srila Prabhupada before Srila Prabhupada became a Jagat Guru, before Srila Prabhupada came to the West. So this book tells us what was the bhajan of Srila Prabhupada. The Goswamis of Radha Damodar Temple, the Goswamis of Radha Raman Temple, the devotees of Vrindavan, they tell what our personality Srila Prabhupada was. One Goswami writes that every morning at 3 o'clock, he would hear someone cry loudly. Ha Roop, Ha Sanatan, Ha Prabhupada, he would be crying. He said one day, I, and this Goswami lives in a temple right next to Radha Damodar temple. He said one morning, I was so curious, who is this great Mahabhagavat who is crying like this with so much emotion? I climbed up on my terrace and in front of Srila Rupa Goswami Samadhi Mandir, I saw your Guru Maharaj, Swami Maharaj, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada, on his knees, holding a broom and doing Sohini Seva, sweeping in front of Srila Rupa Goswami Samadhi Mandir, crying out, Ha Roop, Ha Sanatan, Doya Karo, Doya Karo. My Guru Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, Saraswati Thakur has given me an impossible mission. Please give me empowerment, give me empowerment. This is Srila. It's not that Srila Prabhupada just got onto a cargo ship and became Parivrajaka Acharya Jagat Guru. No. There is years and years of bhajan and tears behind that. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada said, I have shed gallons and gallons of blood to make all of you devotees. It is not a cheap thing. Hare Krishna. All the Acharyas have done Sohini Seva. Mirabai did Sohini Seva. There was no broom in Vrindavan. 
she did sohini seva with her choti with her hair mira bhai and who told her to do that our jeeva goswami shila jeeva goswami told mira bhai to do sohini seva sohini seva is very important we should all do sohini seva but we are not in vrindavan how do we do sohini seva hmm? cleaning our mind cheto darpana marjan because sri chaitanya mahaprabhu says annera hridaya man mora man vrindavan vrindavan mora man vrindavan so we have to do cheto darpana marjan here vrindavan is in our heart unless vrindavan is manifest in the heart we cannot manifest vrindavan outside why could shila prabhupad manifest new vrindavan because shila prabhu was carrying vrindavan in his heart vrindavan is in the heart of a true brajvasi vrindavanam parityajya padam ekam na gachati krishna never leaves vrindavan and who is in the heart of prabhupad gomarari doya sada govinda vishrama govinda kahe namara vaishnav para tomaro hridaya sada govinda vishnu govinda god radha govind are in the heart of a vaishnav and radha govind never take a step outside vrindavan that means in the heart of the vaishnav there is vrindavan where there is krishna there is vrindavan because prabhupad is carrying vrindavan in his heart he would establish new vrindavan in west virginia otherwise how is it possible vrindavan in appalachian mountains of north america yeah, impossible But Shri Prabhupada could do it because he was a Mahabhagwa. So he needs seva. So Dukhi Krishna Das took it to heart, and every morning at three o'clock he would do so he needs seva in seva kund, where the Ras Lila takes place. And because he had so much bhav, he had so much devotion. When he would do so he needs seva, sometimes he would see the lotus footprints of Shri Mati Radha. Sometimes he would see the lotus footprints of Sham Sundar. Sometimes he would see the lotus footprints of the Lalita Sakhi, Vishaka Sakhi, Ashta Sakhi. he would see them while doing sohini seva in the dust of vrindavan he was in ecstasy but one morning when he was doing sohini seva from a bush a brilliant light was emanating and krishna 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 the sound was coming so he krishna das was very curious what is this he went close by and he saw a pile anklet of shri mati radha krishna prema mai radha radha prema mai odhari jeevane nidhane nityam radha krishna gatir mama who wrote this yuga lakshmanam shri jeeva gosva krishna prema mai radha radha prema mai odhari radha rani is krishna prema mai radha rani is personification of krishna prema and krishna is personification of radha prem so even the jewels the jewelry of shrimati radha rani are chinmay they are spiritual don't think that the jewelry of radha rani is some 24 or 22 carat gold the jewelry of a sakhi becomes radha rani's ear ring another sakhi becomes her ear, her nose ring her bangles her anklet these are all chinmay these are all devotees in in golopurindavan we, we know the siddhant right golopurindavan nothing is jada nothing is dull matter everything is chinma everything is spiritual so that anklet is also sakhi of radharani she is chanting krishna krishna for radharani's pleasure dukhi krishna das was so elated to have found the pile the anklet of shrimati radharani he went and carefully picked it up as soon as dukhi krishna das touched the anklet of shrimati radharani his entire body was gushing with krishna prem krishna 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 romanchakam pashu taranga bhajo vande guru shri charana kavindam he became overwhelmed with love in ecstasy and fell over there in barsana shrimati radharani has reached her palace and there lalita sakhi says o oh, radhika one pile is missing one anklet is missing shrimati radharani looks at this oh, really yes i don't know where i dropped it lalita sakhi says oh maybe at the rasasthali you must have dropped it and not realized it radharani says yes maybe can you please go and check lalita sakhi says but now it's just morning time brahma murta time all the devotees must be doing parikrama so okay i will change my form and i will 
So Lalitha Sakhi took the form of an old lady, old Brajwasi lady, and she went and she's calling out in Seva Kunj. Did anyone find a pile? Did anyone find a pile? My daughter in law, my Bahu came to Vrindavan yesterday and she lost, careless daughter in law. She lost one uh, anklet, one pile. Did anyone find it? Did anyone find it? And here our Dukhi Krishna Das is clutching that, holding that pile to his heart and saying, Ha Radha, Ha Radha, and the pile is saying, Krishna, Krishna. You know, our Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Srila Jeeva Goswami explains, Hare Krishna Mahamantra is a Yugal mantra. In Radha Sahasranam, thousand names of Srimati Radharani, one of her names is Hara, Devi, Hara. In the vocative, when you call, it becomes Hare. So we just sang Narsi Marti, very much chanted Narsi Marti. Keshava Dhrita, Narahari Rupa, Jaya Jagadisha, Hare. But that Hare is different from Mahamantra. That Hare is a sambodhan, it's a call to Lord Hari. That Hare is a call to Lord Hari. But in the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, it is not Hari, it is Hara. Both in vocative became Hare. So Hare means Radhe. Hare Krishna means Radhe Krishna. Hare Ram means Radha Raman. It's Yugal Nam. It's Radha Krishna Upasana. Our Hare Krishna Mahama. Srila Prabhupada gave us Yugal Upasana. So we chant the names of Radha and Krishna. But Radha Rani chants the name of Krishna. And Krishna chants the name of Radha Rani. And to give both of them pleasure, we, the Gaudiya devotees, we chant Yugal Mantra. Radha Krishna Pranamora Yugala Kisho Jivane Marane Kati Aranahi Mora. This is our Upasana, Yuga Upasana. So Hare Krishna Mahamantra is Yuga Mantra, Radha Krishna Mantra. So Dukhi Krishna Das, he was holding the pile of Radharani to his heart. And Lalita Sakhi in the form of an old lady. Takes him out of his ecstasy and says, Baba, did you find a pile here? My daughter-in-law lost her pile yesterday. She says, yes, 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 Maya, I found a pile, yes. Okay, what will you do? You are just a sweeper here. Come on, give me that pile. It's my daughter-in-law's. Now, Dukhi Krishna Das, he had a divine inspiration. He said, Maya, you are saying this is your daughter-in-law's pile. After a few minutes, another Mataji will come and say, it was my pile. Then another Mataji will say, it was my pile. How do I know that it is in fact your daughter-in-law's pile? Now, Lalita Saki is short-tempered, you know. She said, so you think I'm lying? Am I lying? No, 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 Maya, you're not lying. But just bring your daughter-in-law with you. <laughs> just bring your daughter-in-law, then I will know that it is daughter-in-law's pile. And I will, I will give. What to say, what to speak of giving, I will personally tie it on her leg. No problem. Just bring your daughter-in-law. I want to make sure. <laughs> naughty, naughty sweeper. She goes back to Barsan. In the spiritual realm, there is no limitation of time and space. So immediately she went to Barsan. She told Radharani. Radharani said, Hey, Lalita, you came empty handed. You did not find my pile. Lalita Saki said, I found it. Oh, you didn't bring it? That sweeper who found your pile was very naughty. He says he wants to see the owner of the pile, only then he will. He will not give it to me. So now what is to be done? Radharani smiles and says, you be the mother-in-law and I will be the daughter-in-law. Let's go. <laughs> so Lalita Sagi says, Srimati Radharani, I understood. Today you want to give your mercy to that sweeper. That's why you left your pile there. Your pile doesn't come off like that. It's not an accident. You want to give your mercy to that Baba. Okay, let's go. So Lalita Saki, this is the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law is Srimati Radharani herself. So Radharani takes the form of a Bahu, a very shy daughter-in-law. She covers her head with a long pallu and she's walking behind the mother-in-law. Lalita Saki goes as a mother-in-law and tells Babaji, Baba, look, I brought my mother, my daughter-in-law with me. You can see for yourself. It is her pile. So Dukhi Krishna Das looks at the beautiful form. He cannot see anything. It's all covered with sari, pallu. She's covered. So he asks, he uh, Bahurani, is this your pile? So she doesn't speak. She just nods her head like that from behind the pallu. So Dukhi Krishna Das says, all right. Lalita Saki says, come on, now give it back. He says that you can bring anybody and she can do like this. 
but i will know that this pail belongs to your bahu only if she shows me both her lotus feet in one lotus ankle there should be a pail and it should be missing from the other side only then i will know that it is truly hers and i will match both the piles should match so bahu rani can you give me darshan of your lotus feet <laughs> hari bol मुनींद्रवृंदवंदिते त्रिलोकशोकहारिणी प्रसन्न वक्त्र पंकजे निकुंज भूविलासिनी व्रजेन्द्र भानु नंदिनी व्रजेन्द्र सुनु संगते कदा करेश्य सिंह मां कृपा कटाक्ष भाजन व्हाट डिड श्री कृष्णदास कविराज गोस्वामी से दिस वाज नॉट शिवस प्रेम कदा कृपा कटाक्ष और वेदसार प्रभु सेज दैट दिस इज द नेशनल एंथम ऑफ वृंदावन यस गोस्वामी महियम आत्म पाद पद्म दास्य दास तू राधिका और राधा रानी गिव मी सर्विस टू व्हाट पाद पद्म योर लोटस फीट एंड दुखी कृष्ण दास सेइंग गिव मी दर्शन ऑफ योर लोटस फीट ओनली देन आई विल नो दैट इट इज योर पाय श्रीमती राधा रानी स्टेप्ड अहेड एंड टोल्ड ललिता सखी यू मूव टू द साइड एंड शी लिफ्टेड अप द एंड ऑफ हर साड़ी टू शो हर ब्यूटीफुल लोटस फीट व्हिच आर द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ मेडिटेशन मुनींद्र वृंद वंदिते त्रिलोक शोक हारि व्हिच इज द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ मेडिटेशन ऑफ ऑल द मुनीज एंड ऋषीज दोस टू लोटस फीट वेयर बीइंग बिहेल्ड नाउ बाय दुखी कृष्ण एंड ही सॉ दैट यस वन एंड वन एंकलेट इज मिसिंग वन पाइल इज मिसिंग बट बाय टेकिंग दर्शन ऑफ श्रीमती राधा रानी इज लोटस फीट ही फेल्ट सच अ सर्ज ऑफ एक्सटेसी इन द हार्ट ही ऑलमोस्ट फेल अनकॉन्शियस ही गेव the pile back to shrimati radharani this is your his hands were trembling in ecstasy please take me this is your sorry i made you come here but i was greedy to take, take your darshan please take it shrimati radharani took that pile from the hand of dukhi krishna das and touched it to his forehead like this and that pile made a imprint a divine imprint on the forehead of dukhi krishna das and it became his new tilak the shamanandi tilak shrimati radharani said this will be your tilak and did you forget your promise to my mother in law you promised that if he brought me and i prove that it is my file you will yourself put it on my good so now come on put the ankle on me <laughs> so immediately shrimati radharani is engaging dukhi krishna das in the manjari seva this is a seva of the manjaris to dress up shrimati radharani so dukhi krishna das put that pail around the lotus foot of shrimati radharani shrimati radharani said i will not let you go like this i will give you your ishta today i will give you your worshipable deity today and from her heart shrimati radharani manifested a beautiful deity of shamsun and gave it to dukhi krishna das it is dukhi krishna das krishna pranamayi radha radha pranamayo hari har prananath mat prananath astu seva na kara har prananath shamsundar shrimati radharani gave to dukhi krishna das and said you serve him he he is my life and soul i am giving you my life and soul i am giving you that person who is most dear to me dukhi krishna das please serve him and always be happy and because you gave me so much pleasure by doing this sohini seva in vrindavan by giving me my pile back my name is he is sham sundar and i belong to him so i am called shama one who belongs to sham i am shama so your name because you gave me so much pleasure your name will be ananda yeah our dukhi krishna das first he was dukhiya then he became krishna das and now he became shamananda you gave me ananda you gave me bliss your name will be shamananda you are mine you are mine so you are shamananda so shrimati radharani gave three things to dukhi krishna das can you tell me one by one what are the first thing na tila what about dt yes shamsundar Yes, he gave the deity chance. Gave three things to Dukhi Krishna, and then Shrimati Radharani disappeared. 
But before disappearing, Shrimati Radharani told something very important to Shamananda. She said, whatever happened, do not disclose it to anyone. Shri Narutama Shanko says, Apanero bhajan katha, nato hibe yatha katha. Don't talk about your bhajan. Don't talk about your divine experiences to anybody. Apanero bhajan katha, nato hibe yatha katha. Otherwise, it will be gone. Krishna doesn't like it when we make a show of our ecstasy. Very few times Srila Prabhupada became overwhelmed with ecstasy, could not control. It was here in New Panajadham when Srila Prabhupada was chanting Parama Karuna Pahudu Vijan. And second time it was in Gorakhpur in front of Radha Madhav. Sri Hanuman Prasad Poddarji Bhaiji's Radha Madhav and your Prabhupada was singing Jai Radha Madhav in Jogila. Srila Prabhupada became ecstatic. It was Bhaiji who gave the facility to Srila Prabhupada to print his three, three volumes of first kind of Srila Prabhupada before coming to Adhaya, a dear friend of Srila Prabhupada. So, Srimati Radhanam said, don't tell this to anybody except your Shiksha Guru who engaged you in this Sohini Seva. That is Srila Jiva Goswami. You can tell Jiva Goswami, but don't tell anybody else. So, Dukhi Krishna Das, now he has become Shamananda. With his Tilak and with his deity of Shamsundar, he went to Jiva Goswami. Srila Jiva Goswami said, there is no need to tell me anything I already know. As the Leela was unfolding, Srimati Radharani showed everything to me. I know you have become the recipient of Srimati Radharani's mercy. Jiva Goswami embraced Shamananda. He said, pass. Just continue. What you are doing is, you have attained the perfection. I am proud of you. A guru feels very proud, transcendentally proud, when a disciple succeeds in his or her bhajan. Therefore, it is our duty to take Krishna consciousness very seriously. There is the best service we can do for our Guru Maharaj, to be good disciples and to attain success in Krishna consciousness. But devotees were very happy with the success of Shamananda. They saw that he has got a new tilak, he has got a new name. No longer his Dukhi Krishna was, his Shamananda, 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 a different tilak. And he is worshipping his deity or nobody knows where the deity came from. Some devotees are very happy. Most devotees are very happy. But my dear friends, Always in this world, there will be people who are envious. Envious. They were spreading rumors. God knows he changed his tilak, where he got his tilak from. He changed the name that his Guru Maharaj had given him. Some devotees even took the trouble of going from Sri Vrindavan Dham to Sri Navadvip Dham to complain to Hridaya Chaitanya Goswami. They went to Ambika Kalna and told him, Hridaya Chaitanya Goswami Ji, do you know that boy that you sent to Vrindavan? Oh, you mean Dukhi Krishna Das, my disciple? Yes, yes, that boy who used to stay in your ashram and eat your uchishta, whatever remnants you left on your plate, he has eaten that and grown up. That boy has gone to Vrindavan and he has rejected you as the guru. Rejected me? No, this is not possible. Yes, we are telling you the truth. He gave up the name that you gave him. No longer his Dukhi Krishna Das. Now he goes by the name Shamananda. The tilak, tilak has to be given by Sri Guru. Your tilak also he has rejected. He is not putting this Urva Pundra tilak. He is putting some other tilak only. He calls it Shamananda. Please come and verify for yourself. Our Acharya explained, my dear friends, immediately Hridha Chaitanya Goswami, he understood what had happened. He understood the glory of Shamananda. He understood that this was all Radharani's mercy. But to remove the suspicion from the minds of the people in general. Hridha Chaitanya Goswami played along. He said, okay, let's go. Let's go. He knew his disciple had received the mercy of Radharani. But to show to the people the glory of his disciple, he went to Vrindavan with them. He went to Radha Damodar temple. Shamananda was sitting and chanting as soon as he saw Hridha Chaitanya Goswami has come. He fell at his lotus feet. Gurudev, Gurudev, he has come, Gurudev. Chaitanya Goswami, what Gurudev? You should be ashamed to call me Gurudev. You are not even wearing the tilak I gave you. You have given up the name I gave you with so much love. I gave you the name Krishna Das. You rejected my name. What kind of a disciple are you? Tell me, who gave you this tilak? Dukhi Krishna Das, Radharani had told him that Shamananda, don't tell to anybody except Jiva Goswami. So how could he tell? How could he disobey Shamananda Radharani? So he looked down, Shamananda Prabhu looked down and he told Hridaya Chaitanya Goswami that 
महाराज गुरु महाराज I got this tilak by your mercy. Hari bol. I got this tilak by your mercy. You sent me to Vrindavan, and that's how I got this tilak. It is your mercy. See the humility of Shamananda Prabhu. It is your mercy, Guru. Acha, my mercy. Who? How did you get this name, Shamananda? Guru, that is your mercy. Again, the Guru, that by your mercy, I got this name. Okay, if by my mercy you got this tilak, by my mercy you got this name. He took out his uttariya. Today, Shaitan ne Goswami took out his uttariya, his cloth, and gave it to Shamanan and said, "Wipe out this tilak immediately. Wipe it out. I don't want to see it." Obediently, Shamanan the Prabhu took that cloth and started rubbing against his forehead, very hard, very hard, very hard. But the more he rubbed, the more brilliant that tilak shone. Finally. Rudesh Shatta ne Goswami said, "You do anything, but I want that tilak out now. Rub off that tilak." So Shamanan the Prabhu picked up a stone, a stone, and started rubbing it hard against his forehead to wipe out that tilak. The tilak would not budge, and his forehead started bleeding. But Guru Maharaj said, "Wipe it off." So Shamanan the Prabhu was determined. Even if he died, he was determined. I am going to rub it off. Guru Maharaj said, "Guru Maharaj." Rubbing, 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 bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. His entire face was covered with streams of blood. At that time, Shama Kishori Shrimati Radharani could not tolerate this anymore. She spoke from the sky. There was Akashvani. Shrimati Radharani herself spoke that, "Oh, Rida Chaitanya Goswami, it was I, your Swamini, who gave him that tilak. It is the imprint of my pile, and I gave him the name." Shamananda, because he was source of great pleasure to me, and I gave him the duty of Shamsundar. Please don't be angry on him. This was the plan of Rida Chaitanya Goswami that Shrimati Radharani should come in front of everyone and give testimony that Shamananda is a great devotee. That's why he came, although he knew. <laughs> so then, when Radharani spoke, now see the dealer. When Radharani spoke in favor of Shamananda. Rida Chaitanya Goswami started crying. He said, "I am such an apraadi. I am such an offender. I insulted a great devotee of Shrimati Radharani, and I tried to do something against the will of Shrimati Radharani. What kind of a person I am? What kind of a person I am? People commit guru aprad. People commit guru aprad, but I am such a fallen soul that I have committed shishya aprad. I have offended my own disciple." He embraced his guru, his own disciple, Shamananda Prabhu, and said, "Shamananda, will you ever forgive me? Will you ever forgive me?" Shamananda started crying. He said, "Guru, dear, what are you saying? There is no question of offending me. I am your servant, birth after birth. Chak Shudana dilo jai. Jalme jalme, Prabhu say, you are my master, birth after birth. There is no question of offending me. I am your servant. You can kick me. You can do anything with me. I am yours. There is no question of offending. No, no, no. I must be punished. I am an offender." Rudeshaya Tanne Goswami said, "Call all the mahants of Vrindavan and let them decide my punishment." All the mahants of Vrindavan were called. Let them go by. And in that by time, Rudeshaya Tanne Goswami said, "I am an apradi. I have offended this great devotee Shamananda, and I have offended Shrimati Radhika Rani, who is Vrindavaneshwari Radha. Vrindavaneshwari Radha, Krishna Vrindavaneshwara, Jivan and Nidhan and Nityam Radha Krishna Kati. I have offended Shrimati Radha Rani. Please tell me what is my punishment. I want to be punished." All the mahants of Vrindavan said, "Oh Shamananda, oh, oh Guru of Shamananda, oh Rida Chaitanya Goswami, because you are insisting that you want to be punished, here is your punishment." Sham Sundar is all alone, and without Radha Rani, we never worship Sham Sundar. You see, Shri Lopu was always taught us Yuga Lopu Sana, Radha Madan Mohan, Radha Ras Bihari, Radha Madhav. Radha Sham Sundar in Vrindavan. Shula Prabhu told me that establish Radha Sham Sundar, Radha Krishna, Upasana. The Sham Sundar is alone. Radha Rani gave you Sham Sundar. Sham Sundar is alone. You must. Your punishment is you must find Shri Mati Radha Rani and get Radha Sham Sundar married and have have a twelve day festival in Vrindavan where now listen carefully. This is the crux of the class where there should be akhanda Hari Nam. There should be constant chanting of Hari Nam. There should be service to all the Vaishnavas and prasadam distribution, and there should be 
lots of singing of Vaishnav Khajans in honor of Radha Sham Sundar. So please conduct this grand 12 day festival. That is your punishment. This was the conclusion of all the Mahans of Rinda. Now, Riday Chaitanya Goswami prayed to Srimati Radharani, Radharani, how do I find you? In those days, 500 years ago, there was no Lohi Bazaar. You couldn't just go to the market and buy a deity of Radharani. The deities were self manifested, like Radharaman, like Radha Shamsundar. Shamsundar. So, Riday Chaitanya Goswami prayed to Srimati Radhikarani. And Srimati Radharani appeared in his dream and told him, There is this devotee in Vrindavan who has been worshipping a deity of me, Radharani, for many years. And I am alone there. So I am feeling separation from my Shamsundar. So please bring us together and get us married. Immediately in the morning, Riday Chaitanya Goswami went to that devotee and said, you have a deity of Shrimati Radharani? That devotee said, last night my Radharani came in my dream and told me that I should hand over my service to you. So please take, yes, I have a deity of Radharani. She's alone, please take. So Riday Chaitanya Goswami brought the deity of Radharani to Radha Damodar temple, where Shamananda Prabhu was there with his Shamsundar. And a great festival for 12 days was carried out, where Radha Shamsundar were duly married. Vivaha Samskar. Sometimes people say that Radha Krishna are not married. What is this? Yes, Radha, Radha Krishna are married. They got married. And 12 days there was Kirtan and Katha and beautiful celebration and devotees were served. Prasadam was distributed. In this way, Radha Shamsundar are even today present in Shri Vrindavan Dham, in the Shri Shri Radha Shamsundar temple of Shamananda Prabhu. So this story, my dear friends, we narrated because it shows the path of devotion. Path of devotion means to remain true to our Guru Varga. Whether it was Riddha Chaitanya Goswami, whether it was Jiva Goswami, what did Shamananda Prabhu do? He followed the instructions of Shri Guru. If we follow the instructions of Shri Guru, Yasya Deve Para Bhaktir, Yatha Deve Tatha Guru, Taseta Katitahi Artha, Prakashante Mahatmana. All the meaning of the scriptures will be automatically revealed. We should have complete faith in Shri Guru and Shri Krishna. So now these beautiful festivities are coming up. Snanyatra is coming up. Jagannath Rathyatra is coming up. Panihati festival is coming up. So let us be united. Let us be enthusiastic. These are not ordinary festivals. They are very special festivals, very special events. So let us be united and let us participate with great enthusiasm and devotion for the pleasure of our Guru Maharaj Srila Prabhupada. Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada ki? Sri Srila Shamananda Prabhu ki? Sri Snana Yatra Mahutsav ki? Vidai Gaur Premana. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Yes, very much. Srila Jiva Goswami explains that the Krishna of Vrindavan, Rajendranandan Krishna, never leaves Vrindavan. The Krishna who apparently left Vrindavan and went to Mathura, then went to Dwarka, went to Kurukshetra, went to Hastinapur, that is an expansion of the Krishna of Vrindavan. But the Krishna of Vrindavan never leaves Vrindavan. He is always there. Yes. Yes. So Jiva Goswami explains this in his commentary to the 10th canto. He says something very interesting. He says, in the jail of Mathura to Vasudeva and Devaki, one Krishna was born. And in Vrindavan in Gokul to Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda Maya, our Rajendranandan Krishna was born. When Vasudeva Maharaj at night carried in the basket that Krishna and kept him next to Yashoda Maya, both the Krishnas merged into one. And grew up in Vrindavan for 11 years. When Krishna had to leave Vrindavan, the son of Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj remained in Vrindavan. But the son of Vasudeva and Devaki, that Krishna went with the crew. Because to it is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam, Shri Shudya Goswami explains that later on Krishna only says that to increase their love for him, he was hiding. He disappeared from their vision. Krishna never lived in Vrindavan. He was there. In Chaitanya Chaitanya also it is mentioned that Krishna would meet the gopis at night even when apparently he was absent from Vrindavan. The gopis would dance with Krishna, they would meet Krishna, they would embrace Krishna. 
But then again, they would think it was all a hallucination. Actually, it was not a hallucination. Every day, Krishna would meet the gopis. But he was just hiding from them to increase their love. Increase their love. So if you go for a play date, does Champarata Mataji miss you? Then, yes, she misses, I know. Then, <laughs> then, when, you, then when you meet her, Garima, then when you meet her after some separation, then she embraces you, huh? oh, Garima, how are you? Like that. Or your father does that. When your father goes for business, he's working. when he sees you after a long time, his love increases, isn't it? So to increase the love of Radharani, increase the love of the gopis, Krishna hid from their vision, but he never left them. Is that okay? Hare Krishna. Yes. Yes, Prabhuji. Uh, what happened to the word uh, that after um, in Ambika Kalna? Yeah, Gauri Das Pandit. So the, if you if you go to where is Mataji? Urjeshwari or Radhika Mataji? Uh, you tell tell Mataji to take you to Mayapur Dham. There is a place called Ambika Kalna. In Ambika Kalna, there is the temple of those gods that it is still there. Mahaprabhu's ore is still there, and Mahaprabhu's Bhagavad Gita is also still there. And if you tell the pujaris that you are a disciple of Srila Jayapatana Swami Maharaj, they will give you darshan of that Bhagavad Gita. And they will give you darshan of that ore. Because Srila Jayapatana Swami Maharaj helped those devotees of that temple, gave some American technology to them to preserve that Bhagavad Gita in a climate control box. So they are very grateful. I went there and I said, I am a follower of Srila Jayapatana Swami Maharaj. So they showed us. You go to Jagannath Puri, you go to the house of Saravaho Mattacharya. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was teaching Vedanta to Sarvaha Mahatacharya, Sarvaha Mahatacharya took some notes. Those notes in the handwriting of Sarvaha Mahatacharya are still there in his house. And again, Srila Jayapatara Swami Maharaj gave them a climate control box to preserve it. So if you go and tell them that we are from ISKCON, we, we are followers of Srila Jayapatara Swami Maharaj, they will give you darshan. My mother in law, my wife, they went, they told, and he gave. He showed, he took them inside the house and showed them that box. So you go to Ambika Kalna, the government entities are still there. Okay? You'll go? Yes. Yes, Krishna. Yes, that's why Radharani came and told him not to rub the stone. Radharani came and told him not to rub the stone. Not in Shamananda, stop rubbing the stone. That will make you like. <laughs> okay? Sorry? Why do we do Snan Yatra? Why do we do Snan Yatra? Because Snan Yatra is a special bathing, special bath for Jagannath. It is his birthday. Snan Yatra is his birthday. So, special bath. Okay? Special bath. Tell your mother to give you, tell Mataji to give you special bath on your birthday. Okay? <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you very much, dear devotees. Shila Prabhupada ki. Yeah. Hare Krishna.